let's have a look at how to evaluate limits at infinity. So to determine the limit of a rational function as x approaches plus or minus infinity, the main strategy we're going to try and use is to divide the numerator and denominator by the highest power of x that is in the denominator. So let me show you how that looks. In example 1a, we want the limit as x approaches infinity. If we tried direct substitution with this, you're just going to get an infinity over an infinity, which is nonsense. So what we want to do is we want to look at what is the highest power of x in the denominator. It's an x squared. So we want to divide all of the terms in the numerator and denominator by x squared. Or another way of saying that, we could multiply the numerator by 1 over x squared and the denominator by 1 over x squared. Right, as long as we multiply the top and bottom by the same thing, we're really just multiplying the function by 1, so it'll be equivalent. So this would equal the limit as x approaches infinity of, and then we'll multiply all of the terms in the top by 1 over x squared and all of the terms in the bottom by 1 over x squared. So that would give us 5 plus 8x over x squared, which is just 8 over x, minus 3 over x squared. And that is all over 3x squared over x squared is 3 plus 2 over x squared. Now we can apply some basic limit rules that tell us if we're trying to find the limit of a quotient of functions, we can just find the quotient of the limits. So we'll use this. And notice in the numerator and denominator, we have sums and differences of functions. Well, if we want the limit of a sum and difference of functions, we can just find the, the sum or difference of the limits. So let me scroll back to what we have. Those rules tell me that I'm allowed to, when evaluating the limit of this whole thing, is just find the limit as x approaches infinity of each of the terms individually. So of 5, of 8 over x, of 3 over x squared, and the same in the denominator. And then let's look at each of these terms and see what each of them would equal as x approaches infinity. Well, in the numerator, as x approaches infinity, 5 is still going to be 5. 5 is a constant. But the next term, 8 over x, as x goes to infinity, I get 8 over an infinitely large number, which is going to be approaching 0, minus 3 over x squared as x goes to infinity. Once again, I get 3 over an infinitely large number. So the value of that would be approaching 0 as well. In the denominator, the limit as x goes to infinity of 3 is just 3, because 3 is a constant. And the limit as x goes to infinity of 2 over x squared is going to be 0. So I'm left with just 5 thirds. I found my limit. Let's try part b using the same method. The limit as x approaches negative infinity, I look at the highest power of x in the denominator, and I want to divide the top and bottom by that highest power of x. So I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to multiply the top by 1 over x cubed, and I'm going to multiply the bottom by 1 over x cubed. So it's going to be equal to the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 11x times 1 over x cubed is 11 over x squared plus 2 over x cubed, all over 2 minus 1 over x cubed. Now, based on the limit rules, I could just find the limit of each of those terms, and that's going to be equal to this overall limit. And now let's look at each of these limits. 11 over x squared, as x approaches negative infinity, is going to be 0 plus 2 over x cubed as x goes to negative infinity is going to be approaching 0, all over uh, 2 as x approaches negative infinity is still 2, and 1 over x cubed as x approaches negative infinity is 0. So I have 0 over 2, which is 0. 0 is a perfectly fine limit to find. So there were two examples where we were able to find the limits at infinity or negative infinity using this strategy. And it's actually a key property of these functions that we just found. We actually found where there is a horizontal asymptote for each of these functions. Let's look at that definition here. A line y equals b is a horizontal asymptote of the graph of a function y equals f at x if either the limit of f at x as x approaches infinity or negative infinity is equal to b.
right? What do we know about a horizontal asymptote? We know that at the extremes, so at infinity or negative infinity, the function is approaching it. So for these functions, I can make a comment for both of these. There is a horizontal asymptote for this function at y equals 5 thirds. And for this one, I know there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Let's try example two, where we're going to need a different strategy for calculating a limit at infinity. So for this one, it's not a rational function. So I'm not going to be able to divide by the highest power of x in the denominator. So what I'm going to try instead is I'm going to multiply by the conjugate. I'm going to create my difference of squares. By multiplying it top and bottom by its conjugate. So really, I'm just multiplying it by 1, since I'm doing the same thing to the top and bottom. And it might help you if I think of this first factor as that over 1. And multiplying by the conjugate, remember, creates what we call a difference of squares. Right? It creates two factors that look the same. They have the same two terms, but they're separated by different signs. And when that, when that happens, it's equal to a squared minus b squared. It's equal to a difference of squares. So when I multiply the factors in the numerator, I'll follow my difference of square rule, and it's going to be equal to the square root of x squared plus 1 squared, which is x squared plus 1, minus x squared, so minus x squared. And this is all over 1 times the square root of x squared plus 1 plus x. In the numerator, I have an x squared minus an x squared those cancel out. So I just have 1 over. So for this one, I have some powers of x in the denominator. So I'm going to use the strategy we did before, where we divide the top and bottom by the same power of x. We usually look for the highest power of x. Um, this one's a little more complicated because of the square root. But I'm still going to look at this x squared here. And I'm going to kind of divide by x squared. It's under a square root. So I'm actually going to divide the top and bottom by 1 over the square root of x squared. And it would be worth noting here that this is actually just equal to 1 over x, top and bottom. Right, The square root of x squared is just x. But I'm writing it in this way so that I can make use of a rule I'm working with radicals. Let me write the rule here. Rule, if I have the square root of a over b, that's equal to root a over root b. So by writing it this way, uh, when I expand into the denominator, I can just put that x squared under the square root symbol. Let me show you what I mean. In the top, I'm going to divide the 1 by the square root of x squared, which is just dividing it by x. So I'll just write 1 over x in the numerator. And then the denominator, I'm going to divide both of the terms by the square root of x squared. When I look at the first term, I'm going to divide the square root of x squared plus 1 by the square root of x squared. And now if I look at this rule I wrote, notice it currently looks like this. Let's rewrite it in that format. So I could write it as the square root of x squared plus 1 over x squared. Plus, I also have to divide x by the square root of x squared. Well, that's the same as dividing x by x, which is just 1. And then let me simplify under the square root a little bit. I have an x squared divided by an x, which is 1, plus 1 over x squared. And that's plus 1. Now let me try finding the limit of each of these terms here. In the numerator, as x goes to infinity, 1 over x would go to 0. And in the denominator, as x goes to infinity, 1 over x squared goes to 0. So this would equal the square root of 1 plus 0. Plus, as x goes to infinity, the constant 1 is still just 1. So I have 0 over the square root of 1, which is 1, plus 1. So I have 2, 0 over 2 is 0. So for this one, as x goes to infinity, y is going towards 0. So there would be for this one a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0.
Let's do one last example. It says find the infinite limits, the limits at infinity, and asymptotes for the function f whose graph is shown below. So let's find the infinite limits first. So for this function, I'm going to look at are there areas of this function that look like they're trending towards infinity or negative infinity? Well, I'll find those easily by if I first draw any vertical asymptotes I see. Looks like I see a vertical asymptote here at x equals negative 1 and here at x equals 2. I know as x approaches a vertical asymptote of a function, the y values of the function are going to be trending towards infinity or negative infinity. So let's look at, at these vertical asymptotes. Let's write down the left and right limits. All right, so I've made a template there. As x approaches negative 1 from the left, let me just highlight that area on our function. That means as our function approaches negative 1 from the left of negative 1, what are the y values trending towards? It looks like they're going infinitely high. So I can say this limit equals infinity. That doesn't mean the limit exists. It's just describing the behavior. How about if I approach negative 1 from the right? So if I approach negative 1 from the right, that would be this section. Once again, it's also going towards infinity. How about if I approach 2 from the left? If I approach 2 from the left, that's this area. It's going down towards negative infinity. And if I approach 2 from the right, the function is going up to positive infinity. So there are all my infinite limits. The question also says to find the limits at infinity. So that means as x approaches infinity or negative infinity, what is y approaching? I know they're going to be approaching the horizontal asymptotes. So let me just draw in the horizontal asymptotes I see, but let me erase what I have on the graph here. So I actually see a horizontal asymptote at y equals 4 and a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. And let me show you how I know that. Well, I can see that as x approaches infinity, so as the function goes forever to the right, I can see that it's approaching a y value of 4. So I will say that the limit of f at x as x approaches infinity is 4. Now let's analyze what happens to the function as x approaches negative infinity. So as the function moves forever to the left, I notice that the y values of the function seem to be approaching the horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. So I could say that the limit of f at x as x approaches negative infinity is 2. And now the question also asks us to state any asymptotes the function has. So I could look back at my graph to see the asymptotes that it has. The horizontal asymptotes are drawn there at 4 and 2. But I could also look at my limits. Right? The definition of a horizontal asymptote is that it's the value of the limit as x approaches infinity or negative infinity. So I know I have horizontal asymptotes at both 4 and 2. So let's write that horizontal asymptotes at y equals 2 and y equals 4. And then for vertical asymptotes, once again, we could look back at the graph and remember there were vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 1 and also at x equals 2. But we could also just look back at our answers to limits. If we have an infinite limit, right, if a function's approaching infinity or negative infinity as it is as x approaches negative 1 or 2, then we know there is a vertical asymptote at those x values. So I could say there are vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 1 and x equals 2.